it's Levon. I'm coming to you from the Love It La Vintage store today and I'm doing a little painting right out on the sales floor. So what I'm working on today is patina from Dixie Belle. I'm doing a piece that's a decor piece that I'm probably going to sell and then I'm doing some display pieces. So I'm going to turn the camera around and show you what I'm talking about. Okay. Here's the decor piece that I'm working on, and it's just like an old uh, piece of, I forget what this stuff was called, but it's like a polystyrene plastic, but redone with chalk paint, I'm going to give it kind of a funky finish with the patina. And then, um, these are just some little clipboards, and I painted them, um, I gave everything a coat of sea glass dixie bell sea glass okay and that's a first base coat with everything and um i'm gonna let a little bit of it peek through but in the store here uh, we have bronze ceilings so i'm gonna be working with the bronze patina but we have a couple different colors so there's the bronze and then there's also um copper and there's also iron and then uh, and to react with those colors we have green patina spray and then there's also blue patina spray so i'm going to be working with bronze and green and um, this is also called prime starch so we're going to be using that a little bit as well because whenever you use um, metal and the clip here is metal so I want to patina that as well whenever you use anything on metal you need to use the prime start there because um, the metal reaction will just keep going if you don't okay so I'm gonna get started here and show you what how to how to use it okay so the first step on the metal is to use the prime start so um, I did go ahead and put some of the sea glass on there but all I need to do is just put some of the prime start just on the metal area so the reason for that is so that the, it doesn't continue to patina because the patina paint has metal in it so it actually oxidizes and creates rust when you spray the patina spray on it but if you don't use prime start on actual metal then it has another reaction that just keeps um, oxidizing. So you do want it to stop. So, okay, so that's as easy as applying Prime Start. And it all dries really quickly. So um, we'll be right back. So we're about to get started with the bronze uh, patina paint. So um, with the piece that is kind of ornate, I'm just gonna start brushing it on. Um, the bronze paint is wonderful paint all by itself. You could paint something bronze and it would be amazing. You could wax it, you could do whatever you wanted to with it, or of course you could do the next step and do patina. I kind of like a little bit of this sea glass showing through because it's a really cool color and it itself looks like what happens to bronze statues when they're um, allowed to get their, their own patina so um, I think it'll be a really cool accent to the, the rusting process that happens with this paint so I'm not being super duper particular you probably should use gloves I'm always telling people do as I say not as I do um, it's recommended I personally have never had any problem, but you know, that's not what you are supposed to do. So do what you're supposed to do. Wear some gloves. Okay, see how that looks? How pretty that is. Keep going across the top. And you could leave this alone and you wouldn't have to do anything else and it would be really cool. I like the top of this piece because it, it's textured on the top. Done with this one, and 
um, what is recommended here is that you paint one coat and then you come back over and you do a second coat. This does not take long to dry. Remember it has metal in it essentially. So, um, okay, so I'm gonna take my other piece that I have here, which is the clipboard. And again, I'm randomly gonna paint on here. Because these ones, you know, the rustier looking, the better for me. We have in our store kind of a mixture of elegant and rustic things, which I like to call rustic glam. So um, we've got that look going on. So I think leaving some of that sea glass is really cool. Okay, we're back. And that did not take long at all to dry. It's not 100% dry, but that's okay. We're gonna put another second coat on it, and then while it's wet, that's when we do the spray. So that's when the magic happens. So it's okay if we don't completely coat it for the second coat on this piece anyway, at least the way I feel about it, because um, I did want some of the original patina to show through, and also I think it's cool that um, the bronze shows through too. So if we don't quite get it all, then we'll get some shiny bronze, we'll get some rust, and we'll get some of the sea glass. So um, I'm gonna just lay this piece down and get the other one, and then I will get the camera um, ready in position whenever I go to spray, because I don't wanna just spray randomly in the air <laughs> in the store here. So um, just gonna put some on here and then right back with the spray. So we have this piece and the paint, the bronze paint is still wet and we are now going to take the patina, the Dixie Belle patina green spray and spray right on the piece. Okay, so right where we painted and where the paint is still wet, we are going to spray the green patina spray. And again, you should probably working, be working in a ventilated area and be wearing gloves. That is the best practice on this, okay? The best practice. Okay, I'm going to turn this around a little. Okay, and complete the process on the top here. And it's okay if it drips a little, that'll be cool. Um, and then I'm just going to grab this other piece here and randomly spray on here, too. You can use a little, you can use a lot, but that's enough for my preferences for right now. Okay, we're going to come back in a little bit and I'm going to show you because you can really watch right in front of your eyes as the rusting process takes place. We can... Um, hurry it along, dry it a little. Sometimes I take a paper towel and just kind of swab it. Sometimes I add a little bit more to it. Um, you can do whatever you want, so. Okay, all right, well, we'll come back and we'll literally watch. Uh, you can see on this piece, the, the rust process is starting to happen. You see those areas where it's happening and where it's oxidizing? Okay, all right, we'll take a quick look at this one again. You can see some darker areas here. Okay, so we'll keep revisiting it, and this is gonna be really cool. Okay, see you soon. Just to give you an update on where we are with the uh, patina process. So you can see we're getting a really nice rusted look here, okay? If I like this look, which it suits me fine. I am going to then seal it. That's the next thing to do so it quits the rust process. If I want it to continue to um, oxidize and I want more rust, I can let that continue. You can let it go up to 24 hours so um, or more. <laughs> so it's all up to you. You could also use some blue uh, patina spray. I used the green could also use some blue on there too. Remember I used bronze and green. Okay, 
Um, I actually have an example of what bronze with blue patina looks like. And then our other ones, uh, this is a sample of copper and green. And then here's iron with green. So you would never guess that that green uh, gives that kind of rust look, but I love iron too. Um, so here's the ornate piece. Here's how it's turned out and I simply love it and I'm going to be giving that a clear coat here very shortly and the clear coat that I'm going to be using is Dixie Bell's clear coat in satin. It'll make a nice little finish on there. So if you enjoyed watching the video, um, I'm just getting my YouTube channel started and I would hope that you could like the video and hit share. Um, that would be awesome if you did that too and subscribe to uh, the channel as well. So I greatly appreciate it. Again, I'm LaVon from La Vintage Decor and look for more uh, of my Dixie Bell and IOD videos. Okay, have a great day.